He's right. Janik, we're making a short film. Hey folks, my name is Jordi for Cinecam.net and let's start off by congratulating Ryan Conley and his team from Film Riot with their latest short film, Ballistic. If you haven't seen it yet, then go do that right now. I mean, after this video. I want to start off by thanking BenQ for sending us a very nice new monitor. This one goes to Lorenzo, who is actually sick today because he was still working on some old monitors and they were pretty small, so this 32-inch BenQ monitor came right on time. It's actually a very affordable 4K monitor packed with a ton of functionalities. For instance, this dongle which allows you to quickly jump through different presets. It also claims to cover 100% of the Rec. 709 and sRGB color space. And this is something huge if you're taking color grading serious. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. Now it's been about 6 years since I last made a short film. Back when I was a student, I used to make 1 or 2 shorts every year, but I stopped doing that once I started working. And I think the main reason was because I was still doing my craft. You know, I used to make corporate films and commercials. And also with those kind of productions, you have to write out a story, definitely for commercials. But those who've been following me for a longer time know that I stopped working for local clients in the beginning of the year and now only focus on YouTube. So yes, I'm missing the art of visual storytelling. And I'm very happy that Film Riot has once again inspired me and that the comment from Film Universe was a nice kick in my butt. So we're making a short film and that starts off with a scenario. And I want to share some tips from my experience so far. The first short film that I've ever made was way back before I did anything serious with film. I was a gamer and played World of Warcraft, but I was always intrigued by creating videos. I just didn't really know what I was doing. So I made a short film inside of the World of Warcraft game. We went through all the stages from writing a scenario, pre-production, testing, filming it, voiceovers, etc. Now the short film sucks. I'll have a link to it in the description below, but I'm not sure if anyone can watch the entire 11 minutes. However, I did learn a lot and that's where my first tip comes in. If you're writing a comedy, make sure to test your jokes. When you're writing in a room alone or with a friend, most of the jokes you come up with are inside jokes or thoughts that are only funny because you're in a certain environment with a certain people. Have you ever had that moment where you had a great laugh and then a couple of days later you want to explain to a friend how funny that moment was, but for some reason your friend doesn't start to laugh? Well, that's one of those. Our World of Warcraft film was a disaster because none of the jokes were funny. They seemed to be funny when we were writing out the script with four people. We laughed our asses off, but nobody else did that when they saw the film. So test your jokes. If you can't get other people to laugh, then leave it out of the script. Am I scoring already? Totally not. Damn it. And a couple of years later I went to film school where I learned the real craft of filmmaking and I produced a short film Tempest Fugit. Again, a link in the description below. And Tempest Fugit was also a disaster. I still believe that the story was okay, but what I did wrong was writing a script that was way too complex to produce. I had zero budget and often just 30 minutes of time with the actors as they were mostly my friends who found it okay to help me out for a minute. I had to film in so many locations, I needed way too much different actors and that eventually became such a big mess. I was spending more time on the phone trying to arrange everything than actually filming. And this resulted in bad camera work, bad lighting and a story that just felt apart because so much has changed during the production. So tip 2, write a scenario that is also realistic to produce. Limit the locations and the actors needed so that you have plenty of time left to focus on better camera work, directing, lighting and other filmmaking tasks. And then came the next short film which was a self-portrait which I unfortunately lost due to a computer crash. And here are some pictures during the production but that's all I have. So let's skip it and head straight to the biggest production that I've ever done and that was the short film Can You Hear Me? Now we had a crew of more than 25 people and just so you know my previous crew were four people, me included. So this was a very big step forward. For the first time we arranged sponsors, baked some cookies to sell, in other words we had a budget. And this could have actually been something good, but it ended up not. I know I only make bad films, but I learned again a valuable lesson and one day I will make a short film that I'll be proud about. So what went wrong this time Jordi? Well, being a film student I wanted to show my skills. Hollywood sucked and I was going to be better than them. You know those typical films, something happens to the protagonist, he tries to find a way out but he fails at it, but then luckily something saves the day and everyone is happy. A lot of stories go this way and I found it boring. I wanted the audience to think, tell a story full of surprises, something that is not obvious. 
unfortunately, nobody understood this story. I have again a link to the film in the description below. And you know what? Those who can tell me what the film is about will get a free t-shirt. So don't write a complex story. As a writer, you obviously know what's going on in your head, but other people don't. So this comes down to the same thing as with the jokes. Test your scenario. Let other people read it before you go in production. And don't make the same mistake as I did. I would first explain what the story was about, and then I would let other people read the story. Of course they would understand it if I explained it up front. So the next time, just give your script to a friend and don't tell them anything up front. Then the next year, we produced the short film Sandcastle. Finally, the first short film I can look back on and say, we did a good job. The group of friends that I made all these short films with was starting to fall apart. So we were left with a group of three ants. none of us had much time to produce the shorts. So from my experience, I knew that I had to write something simple, work with a few actors and limit the locations. I worked together with a poet writer who also played the main role and did the voiceover. He wrote a poet and I would write a scenario around it. The story is still a little bit complex, but because the essence is super simple, you could definitely understand what's going on if you pay good attention while watching. And for me, this was a great success. So when it comes down to the fourth tip, keep it simple and limit the actors and locations needed. I'm also going to link to a short film that I find amazing. It's called The Black Hole and the entire film plays late at night in an office and there's only one actor without any dialogue. The story is super simple, nothing complex happens. Everyone will understand the story and this simplicity is what makes this short film so great. And that brings us to the last tip. Sandcastle was the last short film I created. After that, I produced a ton of commercials. Also in here, I would always work with a story and not a boring advertising. I wanted to make sure that the people who weren't interested in the product could also enjoy the story of the commercial. Usually you have 30 or even 15 seconds to tell your story. So simplicity is of the essence here. Now working in advertising, every hour you spend becomes important. The phrase time is money is actually true here. If I would have one day to write a scenario, I only had that one day. If I would spend more time on it, then it would be at my own cost because that was not what I and the client agreed on. So I kind of developed a format that would help me to write a story. And this is a very simple one. You have the setup, then something happens, which puts the actor on a different path, and finally the outcome, which should be surprising to the audience. An example, two people at a bar are talking. This is the setup. Suddenly one person says, last night someone tried to break into my house. And this is not a normal conversation anymore. The actors are put in a different path, which is in this case a different emotional state. Finally, the outcome is that he puts his most valuable stuff in the safe, which the burglars cannot get into. And this appears to be his wife, who is still in there as the two guys are drinking a beer at the bar. Super simple scenario that you can write out in just a few minutes, just because of that format. And it's not something that I have invented, you know, there are actually many tools and structures that you can find on the web. Now, one of them is the periodic table for storytelling by James Harris. It helps you to find the ingredients you could add to your story and how those ingredients should act and how they evolve. For example, you could start with the three-act structure, which is the most used narrative structure because it always works. You have different settings you can choose from, how the plot evolves, how the bad guys are, etc. Every element has a whole description, for example, the creepy child. You can read more about what they do, how they should look, etc. So as the final tip, make use of existing tools. This periodic table is one of them, but there are many other templates or guidelines to help you put your ID into a structure. Now, let's go back to the beginning of this video. We are going to make a short film. Now, we're not just going to start filming stuff and someday upload the short film. No, we want to share the whole process with you guys and share as much experience and tips as we possibly can. In fact, we're even pushing it further than that. We want you guys to be part of the crew. We're not sure yet which helping hands we need because there's literally nothing yet. The first thing we need to start with is a story. So we're looking for someone to write the scenario. And that's why we've opened up an application form to which you can find a link to in the description below. Based on the idea that intrigues us the most and is the most realistic to produce at the same time, we'll select one writer that we shall work with together. Because after all, it'll be your story and not ours. And that's why we want to involve you as much as we possibly can in the further development of the story and the production as well. So here's what you have to do. In the application form, you will see a list of rules. Important is that you read this carefully. We have some requirements such as keeping the dialogue to a minimum because we have poor access to native English speaking actors. There's also a clear deadline. As of the upload day of this video, you have 10 days to submit your idea. So after you've been through the rules, you write out your story. You film yourself for a maximum of 30 seconds where you introduce yourself and pitch the idea to us. 
This is your elevator pitch and it does not have to tell the entire story. You need to get our attention with that video because if we do, we'll have a look at the second field that you have to fill in, which is the synopsis. And this is not the whole scenario. You can write it out in five sentences if you like, as long as we get a clear understanding of how your story starts, what happens in the middle and how it will end. Later down the road, we'll put it into a real scenario format and think about character transformation and other stuff. And that's it. You hit submit and wait until the third week of July when we shall announce who we'll be working with together. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck with that. And always remember, stay creative. Jordi said Lorenzo is getting his green. Well, think again. He's sick. I'm here. It's mine now. It's mine. <laughs>